we are working tirelessly on the ground to bring about change. But there is often something very different going on at the policymaking level. We are at the crossroads of a world that is limping out of the debilitating impacts of the pandemic while at the same time struggling to come to terms with the triple planetary crisis. I founded Green Hope Foundation when I was 12 years old because I realized that there was a severe lack of inclusivity of children, of young people, of women, of literally anyone who was considered marginalized or vulnerable in the sustainable development process. From our work, we see sustainability as environmental conservation, social equity, economic stability. During the pandemic, we saw that in communities that were affected by both the pandemic and climate change, there was there were just children dropping out of school, most of them being girls in severely vulnerable communities. And so we started our own school, the Green Hope Foundation Academy of Hope for Women and Girls. That's in a small community, rural community in Bangladesh, which now provides climate resilience education to girls in the mornings and functions as a sewing school for women in the evenings. And in this way, we're able to ensure that the women and girls there are contributing to the creation of the local circle bioeconomy, through skill building, entrepreneurship, and uh, through climate justice at the ground level. In other parts of the world, we work on various uh, different aspects. We just completed uh, our one million trees uh, planting over 10 years. Very often we see that sustainability is kind of only focused on the environmental aspect, or maybe the environmental and economic aspect and the social aspect just gets left out. And for us, it's about ensuring that we're able to take care of our planet. We're able to ensure that the people who live in those areas and just people in general are protected as well, know that they have this inherent connection with nature and both of them work and grow together in harmony. My name is Oluguin Gaolubanjo, you can call me Olu for short. I'm the CEO of Ready. Ready provides clean, reliable and affordable electricity to households, individuals and businesses operating in energy poor communities. More than 600 million Africans, as we speak, live without access to electricity. So coming to Toronto for the first time, um, living in Nigeria, I had access to 24-7 electricity. Um, and for the first time in my life, I could see how my um, productivity quadrupled. Coming from a low um, income household, I understand specifically the pain that these guys go through. And I felt I have a need to leverage those experiences, coupled with my own Nigerian background as a professional, to build um, what it is today, um, the Ready Capsule. So people um, rent this for 50 cents, and then they use the energy in the, in the capsule to like power their TVs, their phones, their laptops, their small sewing machine, or their small refrigerators. And when they are done using it, they return it back to ambassadors. And the people who call the ambassadors, what they do is that they are small corner stores, um, small entrepreneurs, small um, traders in the communities. So they act as a point where people rent these capsules and return these capsules to. And those ones make a commission from the old process. And the beauty of the capsule is that, as you can see, the capsule is mobile. It can be moved around. You can put it in your bag. So everybody from small households to students to young professionals to people that work are able to like carry energy everywhere they go. When customers rent the capsule, you are able to see the embodied emission you offset when you rent the capsule. That um, emission offset is used as a credit. So when they want to rent the capsule after renting for a couple of time, they are able to like redeem that to like get a new capsule. Our goal is to make the future and bridge the gap of accessibility that allows people to like get to that future that they that they most desire. Altex is short for Alternative Textiles. We are a Canadian biomaterial startup engineering the world's first biodegradable carbon neutral alternative to polyester engineered from food waste. The $2.5 trillion fashion industry is one of the top most polluting industries on the planet. It's generating about 10% of the greenhouse gas emissions currently. At the core of this industry is a material that 65% of us are actually wearing right now, which is polyester. 
Polyester is a petroleum derived material, but the dangers really lie in the fact that we haven't been able to find an alternative to it. So at the rate that it's going, this petroleum derived fashion industry is going to account for one fourth of the carbon emissions by 2050. So the product that we're creating, it plugs and plays into polyester's existing manufacturing chain. We start our process with partnerships with farmers, uh, with juiceries, food industries that are generating a lot of waste. Um, that food waste, as soon as it hits our facilities, we break it down into sugars, and then our patent pending technology converts it into a biodegradable polymer. Once we have that polymer in hand, we enhance its properties to match polyester, and then it's ready for sale to fashion brands. One t-shirt made from Altex material will divert one kilogram of food waste from our landfills, nine kilograms of carbon emissions from our air, and divert four grams of microplastics from our ocean. Altex is my way of building the solutions that I want and, and, and getting that out to the public in a way that the industry actually needs. Sustainability is core to every single thing we do. The environment, the social impact, and the environmental impact is not left out. Even if sometimes the situation does look bleak, there is always hope to bring about change, to take action. 